In this video, we're going to continue the client experience that we've been building out in Sprout for this sample Heath and Olive wedding. And so again, if you can imagine the customer journey that your client goes on, they've gotten in touch with you. We did videos, we talked about that. They booked you, they signed a contract, they paid. We now have a shoot in Sprout. Let's say that the next part of that customer journey is going to be them doing an engagement session with you if you're a wedding photographer, for example. So let's say that you go out, you do the engagement photos with the couple, and now you're ready to create a gallery to show the images to your client and to let them purchase them and to let them share those uh, images with their friends and family. So we're gonna now pick up that experience and create a gallery in Sprout, and we're actually going to watermark those images automatically in Sprout so that the client must either purchase them or download them as opposed to the entire gallery being available for the client to screenshot. So there's a few ways to make a gallery here in Sprout. Uh, while I'm in the shoot here, I can just click add and click create gallery, and that will create a gallery for this particular shoot. I can go into the galleries page within the shoot and click add new to add a gallery just for this shoot. Or I can go to, I can go to the galleries page here and get rid of that and uh, press add new here and then attach it to the shoot while I'm in here. So there's a few different ways to do it. Um, I'm gonna go into the shoot itself and I'm gonna add it directly in this shoot. So I'm gonna go into here and I'm going to click the add new button. Again, you can see that by default we have attached to is specified right here. So we're gonna start here and we're gonna give us a name, Heath and Olive Engagement. There's a couple different options here. There's a normal gallery and there's a virtual IPS gallery. They're two very different kinds of galleries. We talked about them back in the terminology section. I'm gonna leave this one as a normal gallery. There's also a visibility option. One is you can make it where it's just a normal gallery that's going to be available for your clients to see. The other option is to create a placeholder gallery, which kind of creates this um, sort of temporary, I guess, placeholder uh, option so that you can have a link to share with people, but there's no images necessarily in there for them to view yet. They just have to sign up with an email address to uh, actually go ahead and, and get it eventually once it is made available. Um, so I'm just going to keep this as live for now, and we'll talk about placeholder in another option, another uh, lesson there. And I'm just going to go ahead and click Add Gallery. And once I've done that, I'm now brought to the Gallery edit page here. Again, you know that I'm still living within this shoot because I still have this bar at the top with all the information for the shoot. So let's kind of do a really quick tour through what's going on here. I've got this bar here just notifying me that, hey, I'm currently editing the gallery. So this link in this gallery is not visible to the client just yet. I have the name of the gallery right here that I can just click into and edit. I have a drop down here with some options that we'll run through uh, later on. Uh, right here is a placeholder for the featured image that will get chosen as the cover photo. Again, we'll walk through that later on. Um, all of these are just tools to work with the photos that are in here. I have no photos yet, so there's nothing to do there. Uh, we have an upload photos button, and then we've got a view button here to view it on the front end, a settings button to open up the settings modal here. And then we have unpublished, which is the current state, the expiry date of the gallery, and then a few more uh, little notes and information there. This is another thing here, going to upload these photos this afternoon. So we added this notes and log tool here for most of the pages so that again, you and your team can keep notes of what's happening and keep a little log of what's happening. And then it all kind of gets summarized on the main uh, overview for the shoot. So with that, Let's go ahead and upload some photos into this. And so you can either click in here, you can click the upload photos button, or you can just drag and drop from your uh, finder or your Windows Explorer. I'm gonna go ahead and click select photos here, and I'm gonna go back and grab the gallery in here. I'm gonna select all, and I'm gonna go ahead and now wait. While this is uploading here, there's a few things that we can take a look at. Number one, we can click progress here and view the individual progress of all of the files. Um, we can go back and just kind of keep an eye on it. But the other really cool thing is that you can actually just minimize this and let it upload in the background. It minimizes down here. It's uploading still here, but now you can kind of move around and keep using Sprout all while that uploads in the background. So you don't have to necessarily upload it and then leave it overnight. You can keep using Sprout while it's minimized down here, and then you can pop it back open to check periodically. 
and then close it back out and keep going. For now, I'm gonna get back into the gallery here. I'm gonna open this up and through the magic of editing, I will see you in just a moment when this gallery is finished. Okay, and there we go. The gallery has been uploaded. I'm gonna go ahead and click summary here just to kind of look at a quick summary of all the files that have been uploaded here. If you had any errored files or anything had to retry, it would show you all that information there. Um, but otherwise, I'm going to go ahead and close that and click view gallery and then click the reload button right here. And so now all the photos have loaded in and I can see the back end of my gallery right here. All the images are in here. And this is a really simple drag and drop editor. So you can just click one image and move it around. You can click one image and hold the command button or the control button if you're on Windows and drag multiple images around. Or you can grab one image and hold shift and go like that and select multiple and drag those all around. So it's a very easy drag and drop editor really simple to work with. Now we can see here that some of these tools become more useful. If you want to resort your photos, you can. If you want to show the file names in the back end here, you can. If you want to zoom in or zoom out the photos to work with them, you can. Uh, and there's a lot of tools to help you work with the images here. You can also select any image here. And when you select them, you see some options here. One is to remove that image. The other is to copy the file names. So you can click that to copy file names into your clipboard. The other is to download, so you can actually download images here in the back end, and the other is to set as the featured image. So we talked up here about that being the featured image. So what I might actually do is run through here and grab an image that I want to use as the featured image. Maybe I'll use one of these ones down here. These are really pretty. I'm gonna click that, and I'm gonna click this featured image right here. And what it's gonna do when you do that is pop open the focal point cropper, and this allows you to specify which part of the image is the most important part, which part needs to not be cropped out on the front end. And the reason that we don't use an actual cropper for here is because the image will scale up and scale down depending on what size screen or what orientation screen your clients are viewing it in. Go ahead and we'll save that. And that sets it there for the featured image. Of course, you can always go back on up here to crop that and change that if you'd like to. But otherwise, that kind of is, for the most part, all that you need to do. Uh, you can also always right-click images in the back end here, and you can copy these into a new collection. So collections are kind of like subfolders within a gallery. You can add it to a download set, which is a collection of images that you can enable for downloading for your clients. You can copy those file names. You can download them yourselves, or you can set it as a featured image. So right-click works back here as well. And a lot of those same options are gonna be up here. That's where you can create a new collection. And that's also where you can create a new download set. Once your client has submitted favorites, you will see the submitted favorite section down in over here. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna open up the settings section for here and just kind of walk through some of the sections uh, that might be relevant for this gallery. So I'm gonna open up the top part here. We have visibility being public. You can make your galleries private if you'd like to and set up a password. Or if you don't set up a password, the client will only be able to see this when they're logged in. I'm gonna leave this one public for now. You can turn on the expiry uh, or off, depending on how you wanna have this set up, it's up to you. You can also edit the link for the gallery here. You can remove it from where it's attached or you can reattach it. Specify message templates, which is the greeting that shows up on the front end of your gallery when your client first arrives at their gallery. You can choose to include this gallery on your gallery catalog or not, which is just like an index on the front end of all of your galleries. You can turn placeholder mode back on or off. We talked about that when we were first adding the gallery. And then in here, you can actually also add guests into here. So if you wanna add guests manually to get notified once you make the gallery live, you can close that. And you can turn on required email or not. So if you wanna require your clients to put an email address in to view the gallery, you can, and then this is where you'll have all those emails listed here. And of course, you can always add some manually as well. In the next panel here, we have advanced. There's a few options here. We can change the gallery status from draft or live. That does the exact same thing as clicking done editing over here. We can choose the cover style. Now, this is how the gallery cover is designed on the front end. I'm gonna keep this at split for now. We're gonna have a whole other lesson on how to use our custom gallery designer so that you can actually design your own beautiful gallery covers. And those would show up at the top if you had that selected. 
Next option here is the thumbnail type. Do you want masonry, waterfall, or grid? Those are just different ways that it can show up on the front end. Masonry shows up as horizontal uh, stacks of images. Waterfall shows up as vertical stacks of images, almost like Pinterest. And grid will force them all to square and keep them in a nice tidy square. So it just depends on what you prefer. I'm gonna keep waterfall for this gallery because most of the images are actually vertical and it looks better that way in my opinion. Slideshow format, you can have your slideshow turned on by default and Ken Burns effect is the default one, which is a really beautiful zoom in and zoom out and crossfade between them. You can go simple without the crossfade and the zoom in and zoom out, or you can turn the slideshow off altogether. You can have a light theme or a dark theme in your gallery. You can choose to add a watermark. And in fact, what we're gonna do in just a moment is actually go and create a watermark. So we'll come back to that in just a second. Uh, you can turn on social sharing, on or off. I'm going to keep it off for this one. You can turn on file names if you want file names to be visible on the front end of galleries. And then you can tell Sprout where to start the gallery on the front end. So you want to start on all photos or do you want to bring them to the collection chooser if you have collections. Next section here is selling. This is where you can specify what price list is added in as well as some of the other options for selling. And the last option here is for downloading. So this is where you can turn on or off downloading for everyone, so basically anyone that visits the galleries, only logged in clients, or you can create passwords and assign permissions to people with certain passwords to get into the gallery. So it's very flexible for how you want to allow downloading. I'm gonna go ahead and click update here, and let's go and actually make a watermark so we can automatically watermark these images on the front end. So I'm gonna go into settings, I'm gonna click galleries and designs, and I'm gonna click the watermark section here. And as you can see, I don't have any, so we're gonna go ahead and click Add, New Watermark. I'm going to call this Ashley Ray. I'm gonna go ahead and upload a file here for this. And gonna add that there. Now once that's added, this is kind of giving you a bit of a preview here of what it looks like. I'm gonna go ahead and just change the opacity. There it is. I'm gonna bring it here, depending on how wide or how not so wide you wanna make it. You can just depend on where you wanna place it. You can place it wherever you want. And then you can choose to have this applied to thumbnails or not to thumbnails. It totally depends on how you wanna have it set up. I'm gonna have this turned off just so we can kind of see what that looks like there on the front end. So I'm gonna go ahead and click save. Now we can see that that watermark is saved. Let's go back over here into the galleries. I'm gonna go back into settings, into advanced, and now under watermark, I'm gonna choose that watermark there. Let's go ahead and click update. And now the final step is to click this done editing button. I'm gonna click that. It's gonna ask me if I wanna send an email. Similar to how this worked with booking proposals, if I click write an email, it will use my default gallery email. If I just minimize that just for a moment, and go back into settings, go into communication, and then into email defaults. And you can see that right over here, proofing gallery email. There's the email that it will be using by default. If I open that up, you can see there it is. I'm going to go ahead and press send. Now the gallery is live. And so that's how you upload and configure a gallery in Sprout Studio.